everyone welcome back to the channel today we're diving into the world of influence for software engineers this is something that we get asked all the time everybody wants some kind of influence to a degree because you know influence isn't about bossing people around but it's about getting people on board with your ideas and all software engineers whether you're a junior engineer or a senior engineer or even a manager or leader everybody needs some influence. Now, why is it that we all need influence? Well, senior engineers maybe want to influence company directions or technical choices. And even as a junior engineer, if you're looking for a job, you're trying to influence the hiring managers, and maybe it is that you want to raise or promotion, or simply maybe you just want to be respected and recognized for the hard work that you're putting in as a software engineer. And if you've ever felt unheard, we have probably all been there at one point or another. This video is really for you. And by the way, if you're new here, I'm Jean, your trusted engineering mentor. I've been an early engineer at WhatsApp before the $19 billion acquisition by Facebook, now Meta. In this video, we're going to talk about the building blocks of influence, which are credibility and likability. These are like the key ingredients that forms influence together. There's often some confusion about these two words, so let's define it first. First is credibility, and according to the dictionary, this means being trusted and believed in. So think of this as your reputation. To a degree, it is about how other people view your work. Now, likability is a little bit fuzzier, but the dictionary definition is having qualities that bring about a favorable regard. So what does that mean? It's easier when you look up the antonym, which is the opposite word. You get words like repellent, disagreeable, irritable, sickening. These are really easy to understand, right? If you think of someone and you feel irritable and sickened, that's the wrong direction. And we can consider some examples. When you think of an influential person in tech, who do you think of? People often would say Steve Jobs. I think most people would agree that Steve Jobs was an influential person, especially in tech. He was super smart, but he was notorious for being a bit of a jerk. Some people like to argue that likability is not important and use Steve Jobs as an example. While it's not untrue, if you have a lot of credibility, yes, you can get away with lack of likability to a degree, but you better be Steve Jobs good, right? Like you better have a lot of credibility to make up for the lack of likability. On the other hand, if you're only likable and have absolutely no credibility, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to become a leader. You might be able to tag along with other people, but it's going to be hard to really be in a leadership position. But I'm sure you can think of real life people in your life, like that manager who doesn't seem to really know what he's doing, but has a lot of influence for some reason. Let's look at another example, a fictional character this time. Anybody a Game of Thrones fan? I have seen all of the seasons multiple times. You can think of the Lannister family. They are very powerful and they have a lot of resources. They have a reputation, which is like your credibility. A Lannister always pays his debt, right? That is the ultimate credibility that they use over and over. They're experts on the subject matter of wars and trade. They have the authority as the queen or the lord, and they have long-lasting relationships with other powerful families. Plus, they're also really good at providing incentives like money, title, land. They're really good at understanding what the other person is looking for or needing and offering it to them. So it's definitely a combination and ideally, you would have a good balance between the two qualities. So now let's break them down even further and understand how you can get them. If you break down credibility more, it comes down to a few things like authority, commitment, and consistency. First, authority, according to the dictionary, is the power to give orders or make decisions. And it's not just about having the title to do so, it's about building a strong foundation. I have three tips for building authority. Number one is to be accurate. Don't be sloppy. You want to deliver quality work, but we're all human beings and it's understandable to make mistakes. If you do, it's okay. 
own up to it and fix it. Offer a solution to take care of your mistakes. I mean, obviously it's better if you can catch your own mistakes before you show it to other people. But in case you do, take responsibility for it. Number two is solve, don't just complain. Criticizing alone really doesn't work. If you don't like something, contribute ideas and solutions. Otherwise, you're just complaining and that doesn't really help anyone. Number three is boosting visibility. But unfortunately, this one is not a one-size-fits-all type of solution. So common recommendations would be to speak at a conference or write blogs, which... I'm not necessarily a fan of, for example, let's say you have a 100k following on a Twitter, does it mean that you have authority as a software engineer? Not necessarily, that just means that you know how to write tweets, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know how to code. So it could help maybe if you are in an outward facing role like a salesperson or maybe you work for a B2B company, maybe you want to work at Twitter and it means that you understand the Twitter as a product, it depends on the type of work you do and what your goals are. Right? So there are many ways to build and boost your visibility and to shine, but what works for you in your context may be different. This is a bigger topic that I can talk about for hours, so if you have any questions about how to boost your visibility effectively, you can ask me in the comments and I'll try to answer or make a longer video about it in the future. So back to my list, the next item is commitment. As you think about trying to build more authority, there is a danger of over committing yourself to things that can actually hurt your credibility. Saying yes to everything can spread you thin, making it challenging to deliver excellence consistently. You want to be known for fulfilling every single commitment that you make. So it's okay to say no, more than you say yes. And that's also related to the next item, consistency. Consistently delivering on time builds to your trust and credibility. So communicate if you can't meet a deadline and work on finding alternatives. Again, make suggestions and find the middle ground, but you want to maintain credibility in a combination of accuracy, commitment, taking responsibility and being consistent. And ideally you want a mix of all of these different ingredients to gain authority. Now let's go into likability. Like I said earlier, this is a little bit more nuanced, but here are some ingredients to building likability. And number one is social proof. If others see you positively, it does influence how you are perceived, right? Let's say you're new to a company and everybody you talk to says, Peter is so great, he is an amazing engineer, you're likely going to pay more attention to whatever Peter says. And it may take some time for you to build up this type of social proof, especially if you're new in your career, but you can do it. This just takes a little bit of time. And again, everything I mentioned in the credibility section will translate to building your social proof. Number two is to give more than you take. Building a positive reputation is about giving first and being genuine about it. So remember those people who always seem to take more than they give, they might get away with it initially or in the short term, but in the long run, trust will crumble and their influence will have limits. I like to think of it as like a bank account. You want to be doing a lot of deposits to build trust instead of just taking money out and depleting your bank account. So at work, you want to be making those deposits by initiating conversations. You know, don't wait for other people to reach out to you first. Show genuine interest in your colleagues and their work life and show kindness. Small gestures like offering help or remembering birthdays or simply saying good morning can go a long way. Number three is asking questions and actively listening. Humans are wired for connection and the key lies in asking questions and truly listening. So first start by asking insightful questions, go beyond yes and no questions, dig a little deeper to understand their thoughts, their feelings and perspectives, and then actively listen, not just wait for your turn to talk, right? A lot of people do that when someone else is talking, you're just thinking about what am I going to say next, right? Don't do that. Make eye contact, 
not show genuine interest in other people's words. Try to also discover shared passion or interest. Find that common ground. For example, if I meet someone who likes books or spreadsheets, I feel a quick connection like we're friends and everybody has something they're interested in. Ask questions to find out. Do you both love cooking or hiking or Star Wars or Game of Thrones? Whatever it may be, every conversation is an opportunity to build bridges. And by asking these thoughtful questions and being a good listener, you can build deeper connections, build trust, and create a more positive and collaborative environment. Think of influence like a sandwich. It's about creating a mix of ingredients that work for different situations, right? You can toast your bread or not. You can add ham or turkey, or you can make it vegetarian. But the ideal mix can be different for different people or different situation. And just like that, your mix of elements like credibility, authority, expertise, and likability can all come together in different ways to make your influence sandwich more desirable and effective for different situations. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Next week, I want to talk more about the five step framework that we can use to take concrete steps. So stay tuned. But meanwhile, if you want to learn more about the seven mistakes costing your growth as a software engineer, watch this video. Otherwise, this is the video that YouTube thinks you should watch next. I'll see you in the next one.